All right, good morning. We are the eighth of Shvat, two days away from Yud Shvat. We're doing the Hayom Yom, as usual. So in these days, these days, especially when by God's kindness we stand at the threshold of redemption, it's called the Sal Hagaula, literally the threshold, like you're walking over a door. We must make every conceivable effort to strengthen every facet of our religion. Mitzvot must be observed by hither, with beauty beyond the minimal requirements. Customs must be kept scrupulously, scrupulously, nothing compromised. It's a misfit and duty of every rabbi in the Jewish community to inform his congregation that the current troubles and sufferings are the birth pangs of Mashiach. By the way, this is written in 1943. The current troubles and sufferings are the birth pangs of Mashiach. This is a Frida Karabe speaking. God is demanding of us that we return to Torah and Mitzvahs, that we not hinder, that we not hinder the imminent coming of our righteous Mashiach. All right. Not only are we not going to hinder it, we're going to help, right? By learning this and applying it. Lessons in time, yeah. Eighth. Of Schwartz, page 284. We're starting here in the second paragraph, the Chachamamish, which is in the traditional times. Uh, near the top of page Club Zion, opposite page 52. Okay, we've used an analogy about ourselves to explain that there are deep levels of consciousness from which come forth the more external levels of consciousness and ultimately are thinking, speaking, and acting. And these correspond, this is an analogy for God himself. However, it's not 100% like any analogy. So for instance, when we speak, this process has you know, come about, unconscious, conscious, thoughts, and speech. The speech actually leaves my mouth. Nothing ever leaves him, because hulavadehu, he alone is. So, now we'll start. The Chochamam is similarly, exactly similarly, Derek Marshall, his speech, his speech and his thought, of the Holy One, blessed be He, is always united with Him, with a complete unity, in His very essence. So this has tremendous implications. This means when God speaks the world into creation, though the world, through that process, takes on a, a perspective, its perspective is that it's separate, it isn't really, because there is nothing besides him. And the speech that's coming out of his mouth is not separate as our speech is, outside of ourselves. It's always united with him. With his blessed essence. Even after his speech goes out and actually affects something. What's the effect? The effect of his speech is the creation of the worlds. So that speech is united with him, just as it was before the world was created, right? You are the same who before the world was created, you're the same after the world was created. The fun of Yisborah. And there's no change at all to you as a result of your speaking or as a result of your feeling. You are always the same. El El Habirurim, the change, the experience of change is only in the perception of the creation and those things which are created. Who receive their life, excuse me, from the level of God's so called speech. As that speech goes out and has already 
goes out, but again, it doesn't leave his mouth. It doesn't leave his being. It doesn't separate from his being the way our speech does, but it's gone out, meaning it's come from the, the level of concealment to a level of revelation where it can have an effect, the effect being an effect of creating, of there being something that didn't exist before, though it always existed before, albeit in God's will and deeper levels of consciousness. Now the sense of it existing outside of the sense of it existing outside of himself comes into actuality. Bibriyasa Oilemus, when he creates the worlds. So Mishlabish Behem, when that speech is enclosed within them, the Hakayasim to enliven them, Al Yedeha through the process of the chain of descent from one cause to an effect, and that effect being the cause of the next level of effect. That's called the Seder Hahistalshlus, the order of the chain, which is its order of vertical, from inner to outer, from up to down, from essence to yesh, to substance. But the lowest level substance we're saying here is never outside of him and never outside of his essence. So everything in creation always contains his essence. Even though it's coming down in the Seder Stalchus and in Urida and in the descent of Madregas from levels after levels, Bitsim Sumim Rabim through many great contractions, the Shoinim and different twists and turns, Achiyochul Habirurim until the creation, us and all the worlds, which appear to be worlds on their own, worlds without end, until the creation is able, the Kabul Chayusim, is able to receive this life force which, albeit it comes in the metaphor of speech, contains within it the Ein Sof Baruch all the time because it's never separated from that. The, but it's contracted for our sake so that we can take it without being blasted away and reverting back to that state of allness or nothing which existed before he created. Belay is batlu, but Messias, right, so that we don't become nullified in our existence. The whole Hatsim Tumim in all of these contractions they're not separations. They're just concealment of the panemius. I mean, literally means hiding his face. The panemius, panemius is panemius, internality. It's only, all these simsumim are only to conceal the light. The light of the infinite. This is our main point. The light of the infinite, the light of Chokmah, the light of Chokmah, Kayachma. By the way, this is a topic we started actually in chapter 17. Maybe just to give it a little perspective before we go on here. Chapter 17, he started explaining to us the explanation of his affirmation at the beginning of the Tanya that that the thing, the ability to become a Bainanim, that thing is is very close to us and very, very much in other words, we can do it, do it, because in us, our, in, in we ourselves, our, our speech is derived from our thought, our thought is derived from our mind, and our, and our intellect, and our mind is derived from Chochmah, which is the Koyachma, the window into the ineffable. So I'm calling in this chapter, we will we'll not use the word ineffable, we'll use the Orin Sof, which is the uh, words that the Alter Rebbe is using. We always have a connection to the Orin Sof built within, ready for action. Just, and I've said this before, it's just, a, it's just knowing how, learning how to activate it. But this Koyach of Orin Sof is within us, it's just mastery, it's hidden within us. Inside us there is this hidden light. This is, by the way, the same light if we're talking about organus, this is the same light that's hidden in the Torah. God and his wisdom are one. God and his Torah are one. So the Torah is the place where the or aganus is hidden in a way that we can access it. This is going to be developed much more point. When shinan, that you, for shinantam levanecha, you should repeat them to your children. Why? Because everything is in it. As, as, the, as uh, uh, one of the... Uh, Yes, Bag Bag, Bag Bag in, in Pekhe Abba says, turn it, turn it, turn it, because everything is in it. Anoichi Hashem God's essence is in the Torah. So we have a vehicle. 
The Torah, again, is not an instruction book only. It's an instruction book to do those things which actually contain God's essence. Anoichi Hashem Alakecha, I have put my very self into the Torah. So this essence is available, touchable, accessible, actionable. It's just that until then, it's concealed. It's an or, it's an organus. It's an or which is hidden in our koyach in our in our essence of our soul. It's an or which is genus in the Torah. Because God has concealed it in order that multiple diverse things can appear to be multiple and diverse instead of as they are always embedded in his unconscious or deep, deep conscious states. So he's concealed it. He's concealed that light, Vyachayas, back in the Tanya, and this life force, Anim is Baruch, which is drawn from and into his words. That there should not be such a huge revelation that we would not be able to receive it. Therefore, therefore, it appears to them, meaning to us, to all the creation, that this is some that we are something separate. It appears to them, or it appears to us that this life force and this speech of Hamakim, the one who is called the place, Baruch which is enclosed in his words and in his creative acts, it appears that these things, including us, are something separate. It appears that way. And it appears that it's, that it's the same as our speech, which is drawn from us, the speech of an Odom Sheben Afshoi, that is, when we speak, it's outside of us and not in us. That's only an appearance. There is nothing, Ein Dover Chutz Mimeno. There is nothing outside of him. Ah, the Gabe HaKadosh Borcho. The way we keep speak, yes, the things come out of our mouth and they separate from us. But by Kodesh Borcho, the Holy One, blessed be He, Eim Shum Simsim Vehester Vehelem Master Umalim Lefoni. No concealment, no contraction. No hiding is hidden from him. It's like the Tillam says, like darkness, like night, like kaora, like darkness, like light. There is no duality in him. Duality comes out of him, but duality in him is resolved into singularity. Yochid, Yochid Cheyolom, he is the singularity, and that singularity is the life of all worlds, even though it appears to be. A multiplicity. But you can see, as is written, written in Tilam, darkness will not darken from you, speaking about him, and also about us, because we, we have this power, and this is the Gavalt, Sheba Gavalt, very close to us, inside of us, is our power to see the light in the darkness, to reveal the light in the darkness. Because all these insumim and contractions are not really, uh, what's the word? They're not really obfuscations. They are, they appear to be, but well, they are, they're, they're concealments. But that doesn't mean that the essence is not absent, is not present there. It is present there for just peeling back the darkness, peeling back, peeling back the layers, taking Gaula Agalas and moving to Gaula, just peeling back. The, the tzimtzum, as the Rebbe sometimes expresses it, reversing the tzimtzum. Actually, that, that's not the Rebbe, well, that's the language of Simon Jacobson, we used to learn together. That's an example, on, you know, reversing the tzimtzum. The Rebbe's language, language is that Hashem takes yesh and makes I, and, makes, and, and he, take, he creates yesh ma'ayin, something from nothing, and our job is to reverse the process and reveal the ayin in the yesh, because the ayin is there in the yesh. It's right in the pocket of our nefesh elikis, because there is no something separate from him in Borat. Chas v'sholem, God forbid. This is like this, from, this is from the Gemara. <laughs> Excuse me. The Gemara, the Gemara gives a muscle for this, like the shell of the snail. The shell of the snail, if you've seen uh, snails on, on the beach, or can get it in your mind, you might think that the snail is that the shell of the snail is something 
extraneous because it is certainly outside. It looks pretty extraneous. You could almost pop it off and you could pop it off. But the snail is part of the shell is part of the snail's essence, even though it looks to be something separate. So we and all of creation are part of God's essence, even though we look to be something separate. Just like that shell of this of the snail. The Labushim and Nehube, its garment is really, really a part of it. Mr. Kosov has written, Ki Hashem Huho Elakim. Ki Hashem Huho Elakim. In other words, this in simple language. This, this is explain it very simple. When you see Elokim, meaning God's powers or supernatural powers or spiritual complexes that you see with your mind's eye or with your expanded state of consciousness, those things which are Elokim, because you're seeing these things, these beautiful things, these mountaintops, the wondrous deeds of Hashem, you're seeing God in a contracted state. You should know that it is a contraction. What really is Elohim, what's what makes Elohim to have any presence whatsoever, that means what makes the world of diversity able to be present and diverse and give us the experience of reality is the Yudke Vavke, which is within it, the essence within it. Again, the point being kind of bolded on home here, that nothing is ever separated from essence. Chokhmah is the window into the essence, and Chokhmah is the first of the ten spheres that brings it all down, down, down into every corpuscle, every organ and limb of our body. And all of that is Or Ein Sof. We are vehicles, containers of the Or Ein Sof. Ki Havaya Hu Elakim, because that Or Ein Sof represented by Havaya is what's the motivating, enlivening, and shaping factor of everything which is done by the Shem Elakim. Is written in another place. And therefore, that is, if your perspective is in front of him, if you're looking in front of him, if your perspective is the Orin Sof, that's what your eyes are focused on. Everything else is considered like nothing. Okay, with that said, I just, and that's the end of the chapter. But with that said, I want to just, if it's nothing, then why bother? Right? Well, because when you look at the, when you look from the perspective of the of the all, which is embedded in the everything, and everything else is considered like nothing, what does the all want? It why has he done this? Why has he created this everything? He's created this everything because the all, in his deepest deepest levels of consciousness, wants that this all this everything should be put into action through his own powers in order to do what his will is and what his delight is and what his infinite pleasure is, which is to do Torah, learn Torah, imbibe Torah, make Torah part of our, of, of our visceral being and do his mitzvahs. So he's created a something which appears to be different in order to bring the Ein Sof itself aware, the awareness of the Ein Sof itself into that difference, which is Geula. The light of God should shine everywhere and nothing should interfere with it. That's today's holy time. Yeah. Comments? <laughs> uh, just a big amen. Mm -hmm. Amen is right. And it's, you know, just looking back here, it's just, this, this, was, this is where we started. Remember we started that there's two kinds of love. The Ava, which is born of contemplation, and the Ava Tivis, the natural love, which is which is hidden. It's a it's a hidden in betalumis libo in the depths of one heart. This is an explication of that hidden love, which is rooted in Chachma, right? the power Yeshna Ayin, the power to bring the Ayin down, and that's what's that's the gift that we have in our Nefesh Alakis. and that's if we can touch that. And we can, and we will speak more, of course, about how to touch it. Then we have, that's the short path. Remember, you remember at the beginning of the time, there's a short path and a long path. The short path is we have it right within us. We don't have to, although the long path is important as well, develop cognitive awareness of it uh, through conscious contemplation and meditation, which is the longer path. But the point of this point of the short path is to just know 
that we have the Koyach Ein Sof within us, and it's up to us to learn how to tap it. And God willing, we will today. Any Bahains? What are we going to do today? I'll tell you what I could say. And I should say this probably every day. We've already started. Because don't forget, uh, or remember, <laughs> or more positively, Hashem took his anoichi, his very self, and he put it in the Torah. He, and then he took that light, which was the light of the Orin Sof, which has been exposed to Adam Arishan and Chava, and he hid it in the Torah. And every day, all of us who are here in this group are putting our nose in the Torah, and we're learning about it. The more we learn about it, the more our consciousness becomes connected with our preconscious. And the more we learn about it, we can teach it to our children and to ourselves. Um, I have a Bechain yes. to, to try to strive to look at the world around me through the eyes of God, to try to strive to see, um, first of all, to see God in everything. I'm looking at it right now as I speak a vase of tulips on my dining room table and, and um, trying to look at them through, through a different lens, like to see the oneness, to see godliness, to see, I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what I mean, but but well, I have a corny, just, to just look differently, to just try to look differently at the world around me as if I were looking through, you know, godly, God-tinted lenses. <laughs> I'll make a corny joke. Two lips, two lips are two pairs of lips. There's God's lips and my lips. And they should be one in this singular flower. Oh, right? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and as David Amelik said, he puts his word into my mouth. Mm. So when the lips, lips oh, that's my, that's my, to make uh, my, 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 my speech today reflect that godliness which is embedded within me. Beautiful. I'm trying that. Anybody else? Come on, guys. We can. Uh, what you may think is not profound is probably the most profound thing to say. <laughs> All right. Then we'll meet you tomorrow at same time, same place. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks. It's just a little overwhelming. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank.